Hi there, Andrew Jackson, AJ Design Studio. Got a video today of something I've just updated. This is my version 2 isofote slash lightline slash isoline uh, hacked analysis shader, surface analysis shader. So, um, got to use what you've got available sometimes. And in this case, I had the draft analysis available for me in SolidWorks. So, I've gone and mucked around a little bit more with their. Um, with the shader code, the fragment shader, to give me these static zebras, basically. Uh, so I, I have had a previous video on this, but um, since then I've, I've uh, enhanced this a little bit to make it a bit more useful. So I've got a macro, which will mean I can basically push a button and the stripes will update straight away, uh, normal to the uh, screen plane. So quite useful if you're working on a tricky uh, surface blend, say like the surface in here, and zebras can be difficult to work with because they're dynamic. So it can be much easier to be looking at static lines. Um, so I think I'll just I'll just flick through some examples, um, plan for this video, show some example um, models, um, places you might use this tool, and and also I'll just I'll First I'll go through how I made the, um, altered the draft analysis shader in SOLIDWORKS to uh, enhance the surface analysis uh, capabilities of SOLIDWORKS. Um, so I, I also use a macro for, for dropping out selected surfaces straight into Rhino. Uh, that all happens automatically so I can get a good um, zebra analysis. But uh, this, this light line one I think I'll be using quite a bit now that I've managed to uh, make it a little bit uh, more straightforward to use. So I'm just going to show you the code. Okay, so in your SOLIDWORKS folder there's shaders, SOLIDWORKS shaders, analysis shaders. So you've got, what have we got here? Undercut, parting line, uh, draft, depths compare. Okay, so I've modified the draft fragment shader. So I only have the things available to me that SOLIDWORKS will feed the shader, so I can't change the um, the pitch between these lines or anything from within SOLIDWORKS, you have to do it in this shader. The only things I've got to work with um, within the shader are the direction, which is the plane, uh, the threshold, which is the angle, so the draft angle, and then basically uh, surface normals, and also um, whether SOLIDWORKS is, is showing a gradual or a, a hard transition between, you know, draft, needs draft or negative draft. So what I've done is I've added a few things here so I can specify my band colours. Uh, I haven't changed any of this here. This is the first bit. This has got to do with whether you're, um, you want a gradual change or whatever in your draft analysis. So because I use draft anyway, so I haven't touched this, so I can still use draft analysis like normal. Uh, I never use gradual for um for draft analysis. Uh, and then so down here, if gradual is one, so that means yes. Um, I've added my code from earlier, which basically creates some bands. So I've got 15 bands um, per 180 degrees, and and then a bit of smoothing here on the bands, and then it blends it all back in. Um, so it's it's pretty low risk. Like uh, you just copy back over this and it's just back to normal. So in SOLIDWORKS, if you want to do a draft analysis like normal, I just pick so my front plane, turn gradual transition off, and three degrees. So there I have my normal draft analysis. So I'm not really um, hamstringing the, pro the program from the way I'd normally use it. Okay, it's just that it all comes out, changes if you use gradual transition there, and then make it up to 89 degrees. Okay, and other things you can do, uh, adjustment create. So if you're having trouble uh, getting some lines somewhere, you can actually customize your, where you want the lines to go. Okay, so if you're focusing on a particular surface somewhere, you can try and pack more lines in. Um, obviously a weak point of the shader is um, like surfaces that are very flat or almost planar, um, you can't get multiple lines across because it's working on angle based on the normal. 
So I created a macro to make this easier to use. So if I hit my shortcut, what it does, the macro will make a, a plane normal to the, the screen view, and then it will run a draft analysis, make it 89 degrees, and it uses the plane uh, normal to the screen to drive the analysis, and then it deletes the plane it created. So you don't end up with a whole lot of planes stacked down the bottom of your tree. But what it means is you can just spin your model and update and that works as well if you're going for a plane R view like so all right um i might move on to another example i think i've covered this one all right but you can see this is a fairly smooth result already this model i had spent quite a bit of time fiddling with this model because it's a it's what i call a double loop surface so you've got two circular elements and then trying to blend smoothly in between them so this was a a um an exercise I created myself. But you can see um between the surfaces the zebra stripes and these lines um read the same way. So if you have a a sharp angle between the lines, uh that means they're tangent. If the stripes all match up, uh if the stripes are continuous across the surface boundaries, then that's a curvature continuous connection. Okay. I'm going to jump on to another example here. Let's have a look at okay, a Les Paul body. So this is a recent uh, video of mine. So if I push my shortcut button there, you can see because this is a planar face, uh, not a planar face, you can see because this is a fairly flat model, there is challenges or limitations to the usefulness of using these lines because because there's not much um, difference in the normals across this uh, surface on the top here. I can only get a few lines packed in there, unless I went and edited my shader, which I don't think I'm going to do. But again, still could be useful. Um, so if I go Shift D, edit my draft, bring up my adjustments, and then see if I can get some curves in there. This is useful. On this type of object for because this is built with a um, a trim surface down here and I added a four sided patch so just making sure that the continuity and flow across surfaces is okay I'm going to jump onto another example because this one's I just wanted to show that this is a limitation you've got a flat surface I mean it's good for the fillets on the back but um these fillets were it's generated by the fillet tool, so there's not much I can do there. Okay. Here's a good one, a lozenge. So this is a control, um, a remote control. So if I run my stripes on here, you can sort of see there's no deviation in height as they run round. So that's a nice even flow around there. And if I go into my draft and try and get some lines across the surface here, because that was kind of tricky. The surface uh, undulates down underneath this control. Okay, like that. And then I had to blend in. series of surfaces so you can check here for continuity so like there you can see there's some some sort of issue there so that highlights it quite well whereas with zebra stripes because they're dynamic it's quite hard to see um, something like that popping up so if I pick that edge and then hit D which is my shortcut for the deviation analysis and run that you can see there I've got a, a quite a high deviation of 0.23 degrees so that's that's quite a useful using these stripes to highlight uh, deviations and tangencies between surfaces. And on the back of this product as well, there is a, if I turn on my normal zebras, oh, I've got all sorts of zebra stripes, hang on, let's find one that actually has stripes, there we go. Okay, so this, this back surface is crowned, and then um, I've had to do a trim back, like on the Les Paul, trim back and added a four-sided patch there. 
So zebra stripes, you have to sit here going and moving things around to check the flow and see how things are going. Um, but with the static lines, it's easier to have a look. Like I can see straight away there, there's something, you can see a little line there. So if I run a deviation analysis on that, okay, it's a very small deviation. So it'll be under 0.09. So I don't think I'm too concerned about that. That could actually be just a uh, mesh um, artifact because the mesh is not um, super fine. Okay, I'm going to jump onto another example where we've got Try something different. Okay, here's a good one. So the Apple Apple Watch form. So let's run. See which way our stripes are going. All right. Okay. So you can see they're running around the product here, and you can see the stripes dip down and up again around this corner. Um, what that indicates is that corner's getting longer, I guess, from from the uh, root of the corner out to the apex. So that's okay. I'm going to dive into one of these surfaces and just show you what you can do. Let's say we wanted to play around with the, uh, the form here and just make sure we had a good flow between these linear, these extruded faces and this corner on the end here. So I've set up some stripes. Now I can use if you go features and make sure you got instance 3d on you can start playing interactively with um with your control sketches and because this is draft is uh what would you call it omnipresent it's always on so if you've got draft analysis it's not going to disappear when you start using something like instance 3d so it's actually quite handy you can you can get real-time feedback on your surfaces as you change them. So as you can see what I did there, if I brought it out here, you can see here this is starting to belly up. So that's obviously broken the it's not a G2 connection there anymore. So it's kind of a pseudo G2 connection because SolidWorks um uh, the, the the curvature sometimes will just put a like a little wrinkle down there. So I tend not to use it and try and dial in G2 by using sections instead. You can see something else has happened there. Oh, it's not knitted, so that's probably why. Okay, so you can see that's can be fairly useful for form finding, especially between blends. And Instant 3D um, is really, really useful. I'm using Instant 3, 3D quite a lot nowadays. Um, I never used to, but it's it's proving to be pretty useful for um, blending things, especially like this. Like this, uh, this is another exercise it's in another video. I saw this on, on Core 77, a drill, and I thought, hey, that looks like it'll be interesting to model. So, especially because it's a Y branch. So for something like this, if I roll back a bit, to here, so I've got, there's the boundary blends there boundary surfaces and so you can see with a zebra and you can edit see it's very hard to see your dimensions um, I could change my zebra image or if we go with a static static lines and then if I just um, adjust those lines to suit the surface that I'm trying to dial in so let me see just got to pick an angle that will sort of cover what you want to see. And then I've already pre uh, tweaked this a lot, so this is probably not a very good example. I need to use these um, these stripes when I'm actually doing a live um, build of something. But you can see again that you get your feedback straight away which is really, really useful. Uh, it's just a bit easier to see than with zebra stripes on, because zebras, you've got to go, you make a tweak, and then you've got to spin it around lots to see what's going on. I'm not saying I don't use zebra stripes anymore, but um, it's just another tool.
yeah, the Insta 3D is very, very useful. Um, sometimes it does that real time, like while you're dragging, like that. And then I notice this other dimension over here. Oh, it's doing it now. Before it would only update when I when I let go of the handle, like that. Yeah. But sometimes um, it's hard to get a good continuity until you actually start dragging sections around. Um, and if you don't have sections, whoops. Also, if you don't have sections there to control stuff. Right. I'm going to show one more example and then I think I might wrap this up. Um, what are we doing? Oh, a lozenge button. So this, this probably won't work very well because it's a, it's a flat platform i just going to find something else instead okay so here we got the the retro hairdryer so okay so this is the retro hairdryer that's all knitted together i think this would be a nice one to show with these stripes so you can see that was a very um good angle to run them from okay and also sometimes it gets a bit coarse so i found you've got to crank up the um surface quality go into your um, draft analysis did you see what happens there they updated now they're all nice and then go okay but um unfortunately SolidWorks will revert I think once we run instant 3d because those stripes are really nice now once you uh run instant 3d and drag something I suspect it's going to drop down the quality as you can see, back to Jaggy. Um, that's all right. You can still see quite a lot of what's going on here. But I think I could probably improve the flow across here. It looks very flat. So let's go back to that surface. It's looking a bit flat through there. wonder if I can just quickly... Yeah, that's working better now, as you can see. Sort of curving a bit more through there. It doesn't have the big flat area. Um, whether that's going to rebuild. Let's go down here. Let's see if the rest of it rebuilds now. Okay, so that went on all right. Yeah, so I think for this kind of product, this kind of surfacing uh, layout, lots of blends, um, and complexity quite a useful tool anyway i'm going to wrap this up so um that's my home baked draft analysis hacker hat uh iso line slash iso folk slash light lines shader for solidworks um if anybody wants it um i'll think I'll, I'll i'll put it in the description you can download it and and also the macro um it's nothing flash i'm not a programmer um so yeah, if anybody out there that thinks they can improve on this, uh, if you're into this kind of thing, have at it. Thanks for watching. Andrew Jackson, AJ Design Studio. Bye.